This is a reading from the poem of the man God by Marie Valtorta, Volume 1, Episode 24, The Circumcision of the Baptist, 4th of April, 1944. I see the house rejoicing. It is the day of the circumcision. Mary has made sure that everything is beautiful and in good order. The rooms are bright with light, the most beautiful cloths, the nicest furnishings are shining everywhere. There is a lot of people. Mary moves agile amongst the various groups. She is very beautiful in her most beautiful white dress. Elizabeth, respected by everybody as a matron, is enjoying most happily her feast. The child is laid on her lap, sated with milk. It is now that moment for the circumcision. We will call him Zacharias. You are old. It is only fair that the child be called after you, say the men. Not at all, acclaimed, exclaims Elizabeth. His name is John. His name must be the witness of the power of God. But has there ever been a John in our kinship? It does not matter. His name is to be John. What do you say, Zacharias? You want your name, don't you? Zacharias shakes his head in denial. He takes his tablet and writes, His name is John. And as soon as he finishes writing, he adds, with his tongue now free, Because God has granted a great grace to me, his father, and to his mother, and to this new servant of his who will, of his who will spend his life for the glory of the Lord and will be called great forever in the world and in the eyes of God, because he will give converted hearts to the Most High Lord. The angel said so, and I did not believe, but now I believe, and the light is now in me. The light is amongst us, but you do not see it. It is its destiny not to be seen, because the souls of men are encumbered and idle. But my son will see it, and will speak of it, and will turn it to the hearts of the just in Israel. Oh, blessed are those who believe in it, and will always believe in the word of the Lord. And blessed be you, O eternal God, God of Israel, because you have visited and redeemed your people, and you have raised up for us a powerful Savior in the house of your servant David, as you promised by the mouth of the holy prophets from ancient times, that you would save us from our enemies and from the hands of all who hate us, to show your mercy to our ancestors, and thus remember your holy covenant. This is the oath you swore to our father Abraham, that you would grant us, free from fear, deliverance from the hands of our enemies, to serve you in heaven and thrive in your presence all our days. And he continues to the end. The people present are most surprised at the same, at the name, at the miracle, at the words of Zacharias. Elizabeth, who at first, who at the first words of Zacharias had uttered a cry of joy, is now weeping, embracing Mary, who is caressing her happily. I do not see the circumcision. I only see them bring back John, who is screaming at the top of his voice. Not even his mother's breast can calm him down. He is kicking like a little colt. Then Mary takes him and lulls him and he becomes quiet and lies down peacefully. Now just look, says Sarah, he is quiet only when she picks him up. The people begin to go away slowly. In the room now, there are only Mary holding the baby in her arms and Elizabeth, who is most happy. Zacharias comes in and closes the door. He looks at Mary with his eyes full of tears. He wants to speak. Then he is silent. He moves forward. He kneels down in front of Mary. Bless the poor servant of the Lord, he says to her. Bless him, because you can do so, since you are carrying him in your womb. The word of the Lord was spoken to me when I admitted my error, and I believed everything I had been told. I see you, and your happy destiny. I adore the God of Jacob in you. You are my first temple, where once again a priest, I can pray the Eternal Father again. You are blessed, because you obtained grace for the, grace for the world, and you are now bringing the Savior to it. Forgive your servant if he did not see your majesty before. When you came here, you brought us all the graces, because everywhere you go, O oh, full of grace, God works his miracles, and ho holy are those walls which you enter. Holy become the ears which listen to your voice, and holy the flesh you touch. Holy the hearts, because you grant graces, mother of the Most High, virgin of the prophets, expected to bring the Savior to the people of God. Mary smiles, full of humility, and she speaks, Praise be to the Lord, to him only, from him, not from me, comes every grace, and he grants it to you that you may love him, and that it may help you reach perfection in the following years, to deserve his kingdom, that my son will open to the patriarchs, to the prophets, to the just of the Lord, 
And since you can now pray before the Holy, please pray for the maidservant of the Most High, because to be mother of the Son of God is blissful. To be mother of the Redeemer must be a destiny of deepest sorrow. Pray for me, because I feel my weight of sorrow increasing from hour to hour, and I shall have to bear it all my life. And even if I do not see the details, I feel that it will be heavier than if the whole world were placed on my shoulders of a woman, and I were to offer it to heaven. I, I alone, poor woman, my child, my son, ah, your son no longer cries if I lull him, but shall I be able to lull mine, to soothe his pain? Pray for me, priest of God. My heart shudders like a flower in a storm. I look at men and I love them, but I see the enemy appear behind their faces and make them enemies of God and of my son Jesus. And the vision ends with the paleness of Mary and her tears that cause her eyes to shine brightly. Mary says, God forgives him who acknowledges his sin, repents and confesses it with a humble and sincere heart. He does not only forgive, he rewards. Oh, how good is my Lord to those who are humble and sincere, to those who believe in him and trust in him. Clear your souls of what encumbers them and makes them insipid. Prepare your souls to receive the light as a light in darkness. It is a guide and holy consolation. O oh, holy friendship with God, beatitude of his faithful ones, wealth unequaled by anything else, who possesses you is never alone and never tastes the bitterness of despair. O oh, holy friendship, you do not eradicate sorrow, because sorrow was the destiny of a God incarnate and can thus be the destiny of man. But you make this sorrow sweet in its bitterness, and you mingle with it a light and a caress which relieves which will leave the cross with a celestial touch. And when divine bounty gra grants you graces, make use of the gift received to give glory to God. Do not be like foolish people who turn a good thing into a harmful weapon, or like lavish persons who convert their wealth into misery. You give me too much sorrow, my children, behind, those, behind whose faces I see the enemy appear. That is, he who hurls himself against my Jesus. Too much sorrow. I would like to be the source of grace for everybody, but too many among you do not want grace. You ask for graces, but with a soul devoid of grace. How can grace succ succor you if you are her enemies? The great mystery of Good Friday is approaching. It is commemorated and celebrated in churches, but it is necessary to celebrate and commemorate it in your hearts and to beat your breasts like those who were descending from Golgotha and say, in truth, this man was the Son of God the Savior, and say, Jesus, for the sake of your name, save us, and say, Father, forgive us, and finally say, I am not worthy, but if you forgive me and come to me, my soul will be healed, and I no longer want to commit sin, because I no longer wish to be ill and hateful to you. Pray, children, with the words of my Son, say to the Father, for your enemies, Father, forgive them. Call the Father who has withdrawn indignant at your errors. Father, Father, why have you for forsaken me? I am a sinner, but if you forsake me, I will perish. Come back, Holy Father, that I may be saved. Entrust your eternal good, your spirit, to the only one who can preserve it, unhurt from the demons. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Oh, if with humility and love you surrender your spirit to God, he will lead it as a father leads his little one. Neither will he allow anything to hurt your spirit. Jesus, in his agony, prayed to teach you how to pray. I am reminding you of it in these days of his passion. And you, Mary, since you see my joy of a mother and you are enraptured by it, consider and remember that I possessed God through an ever-increasing sorrow. It descended into me with the seed of God, and like a gigantic tree it has grown until it touched heaven with its top and hell with its roots. When I received on my lap the lifeless remains of the flesh of my flesh, and I saw and counted his tortures, and I touched his torn heart to consume my sorrow right until the last drop. 